Welcome to grade 10, lesson 6. We're talking about solving quadratic equations by factoring. We're going to look at the discriminant and how to solve the quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. Quadratic equations are equations of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, where a, b, and c are numbers. a cannot equal to 0, otherwise it's, well, it's not going to be a quadratic equation x is the unknown value that we're solving for, a is called the leading coefficient, and c is called the constant. c in this equation is also the y-intercept of the parabola. In the equation negative 3x squared plus 2x minus 7 equals 0, a is negative 3, b is 2, c is negative 7. A quadratic equation whose left side is a quadratic expression with a leading coefficient that's 1 is called a simple trinomial. If the leading coefficient is not 1, we can always divide every part of the equation by the existing leading coefficient and try to reduce it to a simple trinomial. There are different situations in terms of how many solutions an equation has. So the equation of the type ax squared equals 0 has only one solution where x is equal to 0. The equation of the type ax squared plus c equals 0 can be rearranged to solve for x squared. And since uh, the resulting value is negative and the square of number cannot equal a negative value, it has no solutions. If negative c over a is greater than zero. For example, you plug in the values and it turns out a positive number to be a positive number. There are two possible solutions. x1 is negative square root of negative over c over a and x square x2 is equal to positive square root of negative c over a. The equation of the type ax squared plus bx equals zero can be common factored into x times ax plus b equals zero. It has two possible roots, x equals zero and x equals negative b over a. If the value in front of the bracket is a constant and does not contain a variable, we are not considering it to be a root. x2 results from a linear equation ax plus b equals zero. We can solve quadratic equations by factoring. When it's a simple trinomial equation, x squared plus bx plus q, where the leading coefficient is 1, then x1 plus x2 is equal to negative p, x1 times x2 is equal to q. When it is a complex trinomial equation, ax squared plus bx plus c, we have to use decomposition. We're going to take a look at the examples in just a few moments. We always try to factor the equation first. If it's non-factorable, the equation has no solutions. If it's non-factorable because the factors are not nice integer factors, it still has the solutions, but they're just not easily found. In order for us to solve an equation like that, we have to use the quadratic formula. And right here, you can see the proof of the quadratic formula. It just explains where the formula comes from. The quadratic formula has a portion under the square root. And under the square root, we have this expression, b squared minus 4ac. This expression determines whether the equation has one solution, two solutions, or no solutions. We call this discriminant. So before we use the quadratic formula, we can always just do this quick check to see if the equation even has any solutions. So if the discriminant is less than zero, the equation has no solutions. So if we sub in the corresponding values into this expression and all of this ends up being zero, then less than zero, then the equation has no solutions. 
If it's equal to zero, then the equation has one solution, negative b over 2a. And if the discriminant is greater than zero, the equation has two solutions. How many solutions does x squared minus 6x minus 13 equals zero have? We're checking the values. We see that the discriminant turns out to be a negative number and the equation has no solutions. We don't have to continue solving it. Let's try and solve the following two equations. So let's start with this one. This is a simple trinomial type of equation. The leading coefficient here is one, and we know that x1 plus x2 has to equal negative p. This is our negative p. Um, and this is our q and it has to multiply to q. So something that adds to negative two. So x1 plus x2 has to equal uh, negative two and then x1 times x2 has to equal negative 35. So which two numbers will multiply to negative 35 and add to negative 2? x1 is then equal to negative 7. x2 is equal to positive 5 negative 7 plus 5 is negative 2, negative 7 times 5 is negative 35. These are the solutions to this equation. Let's look at this equation. So this is a complex trinomial type of equation. The leading coefficient is not 1. We have to first try and see if we can reduce this by 3 to make it 1. 5 is not evenly divisible by 3, or 2 is not evenly divisible by 3, so we cannot really do much about it. We have to use the decomposition. So, we first need to find two numbers whose product is uh, equal to 3 times 2, and whose sum is equal to 5. So, some two numbers that multiply to 6 and add to 5. What are the two possible numbers? The two numbers are th 3 and 2, right? So then, we're keeping this part here, 3x squared, and we're expressing the 5x in terms of those two numbers, 2x plus 3x we're decomposing the middle term. The rest remains the same for now. Now, we are going to group the terms. So I will group the 3x squared and 3x together. And I will group 2x and 2 together. And separate the two groups by brackets. The plus here remains. Now I will continue with common factoring within each one of the brackets so that I end up with the common bracket at the end. So from here the common factor is 3x and the expression in brackets becomes x plus 1 plus, don't lose this plus here, or minus, if it's a minus, uh, that's a common mistake, try not to make it, keep it in mind. It's not multiplication, it's addition. From here, the common factor is 2, and we end up with x plus 1. So, I have a common bracket now, I can common factor it, I can keep it only once 
3x plus 1. And then the second factor is 3x plus 2. Now my equation is in a factored form. I can take each one of these linear components and make it them equal to 0. x plus 1 equals 0, 3x plus 2 equals 0. Therefore, x equals negative 1, that's my x1. And then here, x equals negative 2 over 3. This is my x2. This just involves simple rearranging negative 2 on the other side divided by 3. This is it for today. I hope you enjoyed the lesson and you can now continue on to grade 10, lesson 7.